Russia is preparing to challenge the Boeing 767 and Boeing's potential future 797 program with its own powerful new widebody project, the MC-21500. This widebody aircraft, featuring an all-new airframe and a stronger, more advanced engine, is being promoted by Russia as a contender that could outmatch the West's flagship aircraft programs. So, what exactly is the MC-21500? And how can it possibly challenge the 767 and the 797? Let's find out. In the city of Perm on September 19, 2025, a piece of news that shocked the aviation industry was revealed. During a visit to the PD-35 engine project, the Russian president and deputy prime minister Denis Mantarov were present. Initially, all attention was focused on this new generation engine, but Mantarov unexpectedly unveiled a completely different aircraft program, the MC-21500. The name immediately sparked curiosity. Many people thought it was just a stretched version of the familiar narrow-body MC-21300. But the truth is completely different. The MC-21500 is not a simple upgrade. It is a true wide-body aircraft, with a capacity of 250 to 270 passengers and a range of 8,000 to 9,000 kilometers. It is capable of flying directly from Kaliningrad in the west to Vladivostok in the east of Russia. This places Russia in the same segment as rumored projects like the Boeing 797, ready to compete in the global medium-haul wide-body market. More than just a larger version, this wide-body aircraft also features a completely new airframe, not reused from the MC-21300 model. This requires significant changes in the design of everything from the wings and mid-fuselage to the fuel system and landing gear. It also shows that it is an ambitious and completely independent project. Although still in the initial conceptual stage, independent reports confirm that the United Aircraft Corporation, UAC, is working on it diligently. Deputy Prime Minister Mantarov not only confirmed the existence of this MC-21 widebody aircraft, but also revealed other related projects, such as the L-100 transport aircraft and the MC-21-600. However, the name MC-21-500 has caused much debate. Some experts argue that the name is misleading leading people to think it is merely a stretched variant. In the aviation industry, a number is more than just a digit. It is a statement of identity. Airbus and Boeing always use distinct numbers to differentiate between aircraft generations clearly. However, from another perspective, the name 500 could reflect a long-term strategy. Fleet commonality. If Russia succeeds in allowing the version 300 and version 500 to share a common cockpit, training system, and pilot certification, it would provide a huge advantage for airlines. It would significantly reduce pilot training and operational costs, similar to how Boeing succeeded with the 757 and 767. This could be a strategic advantage Moscow is aiming for in the future. For an aircraft to successfully take to the skies, it needs the right engine. For the MC-21500 program, success or failure hinges on a single factor, the engine. So, which engine will turn this potential jetliner into a reality? Wait, don't forget to hit subscribe because we know you're going to love what's coming next. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. The answer lies in the PD-26 engine, a new name with roots in an ambitious project. The PD-26 is designed specifically for the MC-21500, but it isn't a completely fresh start. It is developed directly from the PD-35 core, a super engine currently being developed in Russia. Imagine the difference. The PD-14 engine on the current MC-21300 has a fan diameter of about 1.9 meters, which is powerful enough for a narrow-body aircraft. But surprisingly, the PD-26 is different. It has a massive fan with a diameter of nearly 3 meters. This change isn't just a number, it creates a domino effect on the design. The entire aircraft structure must be re-engineered. The wing box must be strong enough to hold more fuel and weight, and the fuselage must be wider to accommodate a 232 seating configuration similar to the legendary Boeing 767. Notably, this engine is the civilian version of the military PD-35 engine. With a thrust of about 26 tons, it has power comparable to the engines used on the mid-size wide-body aircraft Boeing 767, one of the most successful wide-body aircraft in history. This shows not only that Russia is creating a new product, but also that it's pursuing a larger strategy, building a family of engines from a common technological core. From the PD-35 core, they can customize it to create the PD-26 for civilian aircraft, and in the future, possibly for heavy military transport aircraft. In other words, this engine is the heart designed specifically for the MC-21500. 
To better understand this engine, we have to go back and look at the story of the PD-35. This project is Russia's bold attempt to enter the large turbofan engine segment, long dominated by Western giants like General Electric and Rolls-Royce. The story began in 2021 when Russian engineers started testing the DDT technology demonstrator on a test stand. Step by step, after countless design changes and tests, the prototype reached the expected thrust level of 35 tons. This was a major achievement. It proved that, in theory, building such a powerful engine was entirely feasible. It can be said that the theoretical phase was a success, but in aviation, theory is never enough. The next steps are to build a full-scale prototype, test it under real-world conditions, and finally install it under the wing of a test aircraft for flight trials. Russian engineers report that progress is steady, but they are still working tirelessly to close the gap between the blueprint and reality. The PD-35 is more than just an engine. It represents Moscow's ambition and self-sufficiency in the aviation industry. Although the only official customer so far is the Ministry of Defense, for heavy transport aircraft, this engine has a greater strategic role. With the D-18T engine no longer in production, the future of the N-124 Ruslan transport fleet has become uncertain. New transport aircraft designs like the Slan will need a modern and powerful replacement engine, and the PD-35 is the prime candidate. All of this reflects the vision of engineer Alexander Inesimsev, who made a realistic choice. Focus on a 35-ton engine rather than jumping to 55 tons. All technical documents are complete, and the prototype exists. The current phase is non-stop work to turn the prototype into a real product, ready for its first flight. The big question remains, which aircraft will be the first to carry the PD-35 under its wing? The answer might very well be the MC-21-500 with the engine as another existence of the PD-35, called the PD-26. In short, the PD-35 is the technological platform. The PD-26 is what turns it into a commercial product in the short term. However, having an engine and a design is just the beginning. The real question that will determine the fate of the MC-21-500 lies in another factor, the market. Can Russia find enough customers to turn this massive project into reality? Analysts have put forward some interesting figures. According to them, Russia's domestic market may need around 150 wide-body aircraft over the next few decades. In addition, potential export customers such as Iran, North Korea, Cuba, and Venezuela could add another 100 aircraft. Altogether, projections suggest up to 500 aircraft over 20 years, including cargo, tanker, and military variants. It sounds impressive, but let's place that figure into a broader context. 500 aircraft in 20 years is significant for Moscow, yet still modest compared to giants like Boeing and Airbus. For example, the Boeing 737 family alone has produced more than 11,000 units and continues to grow. Even wide bodies such as the Boeing 787 Dreamliner have already surpassed 1,000 deliveries, with hundreds more on order. This illustrates that if Russia truly wants to compete on the global stage, it will have to work much harder. However, at this point in time, the country's most important goal may not be to compete with Boeing or Airbus on the global market, but rather to meet its own needs. With current sanctions and dependence on Western aircraft, achieving self-sufficiency in producing a modern wide-body airliner to serve domestic and regional routes has become a top priority. This is not only an economic issue, but also one of national security and the long-term sustainability of this country's aviation industry. But this is when things begin to get more difficult. Serious challenges lie ahead, and the Moscow government will have to confront them to reach its goals. The first is the question of massive investment. Developing a new wide-body aircraft is a financial black hole, requiring billions of dollars for research, development, and factory construction. Consider the historical context. Both Boeing's 787 Dreamliner and Airbus's A350 XWB programs faced significant cost overruns and delays, despite being backed by two of the world's most powerful aerospace economies. For Russia, with a much smaller market to recoup costs, this investment is a huge gamble one that not every nation dares to take. Next comes the issue of supply chains. Under the pressure of sanctions, Russia is forced to rely entirely on domestic production instead of the global supply network. Its import substitution program is still a work in progress. For instance, the MC-21-300 relied heavily on components from Western suppliers like Pratt & Whitney for engines and Collins Aerospace for avionics. Indeed, there were two initial engine options for MC-21. One was the Russian-made PD-14, 
and the second option was the PW1400G engine from Pratt & Whitney, U.S. Many of the early test flight prototypes of the MC21300 were equipped with Pratt & Whitney engines. Besides, some reports indicate that the avionics systems on the early aircraft also involved Western companies such as Rockwell Collins and Thales, alongside domestic firms. However, after the sanctions, this country was forced to change its strategy. It accelerated the localization program, replacing all foreign components with domestically produced ones. This all-Russian version was designated the MC-21-310, equipped solely with the PD-14 engine and domestically made avionics. Now, it must develop and produce its own equivalents, and securing a consistent supply of high-quality components, from advanced composite materials for the wings to complex electronic systems, remains a formidable task. Finally, if Moscow still harbors ambitions for the MC-21-500 to fly worldwide, it must obtain international certification from organizations such as the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. This is a rigorous and bureaucratic process that can take years, involving exhaustive testing and documentation. Without this certification, the aircraft is essentially confined to domestic and allied airspaces, severely limiting its commercial viability. This is a lengthy, costly, and extremely complex process. Despite these obstacles, there are reasons for cautious optimism. The MC-21310 has already demonstrated the capabilities of Russia's aviation industry. This variant successfully conducted test flights using domestically produced systems, proving that progress is possible even under sanctions. The development of the PD-26 engine is another bright spot. As the main promotion of the project, it is now moving closer to flight testing, evidence that it is on the right track and will be ready for the new aircraft. Moreover, the market demand for a 250 to 270 seat long range wide body is real. This segment is expected to grow strongly in the future as global passenger numbers continue to rise. The PD-35 and the MC-21500 illustrate two sides of Moscow's broader ambition. The PD-35 represents a technological leap, opening the door to engine self-sufficiency for large aircraft. The MC-21500, meanwhile, is a more pragmatic step into the medium widebody market with export potential. The existence of both projects, regardless of their eventual outcomes, underscores this country's strong commitment to sustaining and advancing its civil aviation industry. Even if this Russian widebody aircraft ultimately achieves only modest production numbers, its strategic value remains significant. In aviation, ambition matters just as much as success. This is not merely a story about a single aircraft, but about self-reliance, resilience, and long-term vision. What do you think is the most important factor for their aircraft program to succeed? Let us know what you think. Don't forget to stay tuned for our next videos by hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.